Hi there, my name is John Green and this is my presentation on why we need trees. Within this presentation, we're going to cover areas such as the structure and function of trees, the importance of trees in our urban and natural environment, and also sustainable methods on maintaining a healthy tree population. So we start with the structure of a tree. A tree is a vascular plant that is comprised of three main vital organs. We have the leaves, the stem and the roots. If we start with the stem of a tree, this provides the axial strength and often what delivers the height to a tree. The stem provides as a means of transport for nutrients up to the leaves and often can be broken down into smaller sections such as nodes and internodes. The roots of a tree, these provide the stability, they're the anchorage to prevent a tree from falling over. The roots also act as a large harvesting system for nutrients in the soil. They obtain these when they, become into a, when they enter a solution and it uptakes water and at the same time nutrients. The third and final organ is the leaves. The leaves allow for photosynthesis and gaseous exchange. The photosynthesis occurs through a chemical which is in the leaves called chlorophyll. This is a green pigmentation in leaves that you see and allows for photosynthesis to occur. The stomata that are in the leaves open and close, allowing for gaseous diffusion. Here we have three photos which cover the three vital organs of a tree. We have the leaves here, which you can see the green pigmentation in leaves is from the chlorophyll and the nodes and internodes that I was talking about in the stem. Here we have a stem and this is a vessel within the stem that allows for the transport of nutrients and water. We have the xylem and phloem. They both conduct water up through the stem to the leaves. And then here we have the roots of a tree. Roots can come in many different forms. Here we see adventitious roots that grow out from above the ground. They can act as stabilizers for the tree. And these are especially effective because they don't have to put a woody growth in between the stem and the root. They just act as stilts. And um, roots can come in many different forms. They can come in aerial forms. Uh, they can come in subterranean. They really quite versatile uh, creations. So trees in our urban environment. Trees are very important in our urban environment, especially in dense cities where there are large amounts of carbon being put out from transport. Uh, there's a fact here that a mature tree has the ability to absorb up to 150 kilos of carbon in a year. Now, this is a huge statistic for where we've got lots of cars uh, and public transport. It helps keep a healthy city and helps the population remain healthy and also reduces the carbon footprint of that city. So we reduce our effect towards climate change. We also have the trees help filter out pollutants such as dust. Now this again helps keep a healthy environment in these really dense cities where lots of people are living, there's lots of pollutants. It helps remove those and keep a healthy population. We also see that trees help with a noise pollution problem where there's all this traffic, uh, a lot of sound pollution and these trees act as a buffer and absorb this sound so that we have a much nicer living environment. Trees also lower the air temperature, they can lower it by up to 8 degrees. This again is a huge step in counteracting the effects of climate change and global warming and in the cities where it especially gets hotter. Uh, this is a key, key component in maintaining that high level of living. A question today aimed at you guys is, do you know of any uh, tree regeneration programs or planting schemes within your city? They're often fairly common and if so, can you help out and try and get involved in these regeneration schemes? Now we move on to trees in the natural environment. We see that trees are equally as important in the natural environment as they are in urban. They help in uh, ecosystems such as on riverbanks 
where they provide structural integrity to the banks and prevent erosion. As the water passes by, it helps maintain those riverbanks, keep stability. Uh, also, in the case of flooding after high rainfall, these trees will help absorb this excess water. If we didn't have any trees, then we'd be highly susceptible to flooding along rivers. We also see that trees host uh, complex microhabitats. The dead wood in trees provides uh, plenty of uh, habitat for insects and bugs and the hollows for birds and possums in Australia over here. Um, and then the leaf litter, that's a huge factor that we have to consider. Um, as leaves fall down, they then uh, go through a process called mineralization. They get their nitrogen is reintroduced into the soil and this is taken up by the trees for new growth. So we have this carbon cycle where a tree takes up the nutrients, it grows and it drops the nutrients. If we were to remove a tree entirely, this carbon is removed from the carbon cycle and uh, the trees have a lot less nutrients in their environment. So another task for you today is to find a woodland near you uh, and I would like for you to take a single tree and try and find as many species as you can on this single tree and if you'd like to do a few trees in a certain area add up all the species and you can see just how much wildlife lives in our forests that surround us on a daily basis. Sustainability, probably the biggest topic is how we can create a sustainable forestry system. Sustainable forestry is the practice of balancing the needs of the community, environment and wildlife whilst conserving the forest for the next generations. A suggested approach of this would be to have a tree for a tree regeneration scheme. So going back to uh, taking a tree out of the carbon cycle, for every time we remove a tree, it'd be good to replace it with another so that we never end up in a deficit. We always maintain these, uh, these big rainforests we have and avoid deforestation. Pruning works. They can prolong the life of a tree. Uh, if we have an overextension of a limb uh, that is prone to failure, we can uh, reduce the weight of this limb and mitigate the risk of it failing. By doing this, we prolong the life of the tree as it doesn't have these big wounds that it has to try and compartmentalise and heal. Uh, also, the dead trees, instead of just removing a dead tree because it might be unsightly, we can uh, mitigate the risk of the loose uh, dead wood. We bring all that in and we take it back to a framework. Uh, and this provides a habitat for so much wildlife and we are able to retain that tree. And recycling. Recycling is a big one. Uh, these natural resources that we often take for granted, such as paper and cardboard, if we can recycle these, we're lowering our use of these natural resources and try and limit that deforestation again that uh, produces all these resources that we're pretty used to. So here we have two photos just to uh, kind of bring home the shocking extent of deforestation. We have over here uh, a huge stretch of field. Um, there's a statistic that 80,000 acres of uh, deforestation occurs every day. And here again, the uh, loss of these wildlife systems that we have. Uh, there's a koala here with, uh, well, nowhere to call it home. These wildlife uh, systems are pushed further and further out and if it keeps going at this rate there won't be anywhere left. So some further reading here. Um, we have the One Tree Planted organisation. They're a charity group aimed at uh, reintroducing trees. You can donate to plant a tree. Um, they're open to the public so anyone can go along and help plant and help contribute to these communities. Uh, they're currently involved in the California fires and you can donate a tree to replace the ones that were damaged in the fires. And secondly we have the Rainforest Alliance, another charity organisation. Um, they're a good source of information, they have loads of facts about 
rates of deforestation and just how much trees contribute to us. And again, it's a charity organisation where you can contribute to, uh, to these to plant trees and try and encourage this new development of forests. That's the end of the presentation. Thank you very much.